Hallelujah, hallelujah. Where would I be without you? Hallelujah. We praise God for the opportunity. You may be seated. We praise God for the opportunity just to speak on behalf of a beautiful young lady, your first lady. Your first lady. Evangelist Carolyn Eden. Yes. Thank God for her. She is just a sweetheart, just a sweetheart. Still got her um, teenage weight and shape, looks beautiful. Most of us have outgrown the teenagers thing a long time ago, but God has preserved you. I salute you, doll. I salute you. Beautiful. We thank God for being here. Thank God for the pastor, Elder Eden. He saw me. Yes, give it to him. He saw me trying to park, and I cannot park, so I done ran on the curb. And he was looking at me like, Lord, have mercy. Do I have to park this girl's car? But I thank God for him. I thank God for my sister and brother who came today. Thank you. I got up and saw them. And um, I really haven't taken any ministry assignments in a while. And um, I was going, not because um, no one had asked me. I just hadn't taken them in a couple of in, in a minute and um, it wasn't because um, God told me not to take him you know how people real deep I gotta pray about this <laughs> and see if God want me to take this I just didn't take him so when um, Nicole called me my first answer was gonna be mm -mm, honey no not this time but I couldn't say no and I well you know how you want to say no you I want to say no, but now, the thing that came out, yeah, I'll do it. I'm like, what? And so God began to deal with me with that. And he said, why are you not speaking to my people when I've given that to you to do? And I couldn't do anything. He said, look where I bought you from. 2014, I was in the hospital for a minute. I had the doctor say, I'm never going to um, say I did, but the doctor said I had a major stroke. And I was not supposed to be talking. I was not supposed to be walking. I was supposed to have somebody pushing me around. It was a day when I went, I was looking, I felt funny anyway that day. And when I went to the doctor, I felt funny. I went to the doctor and the doctors took my pressure and immediately he said, do you have somebody that can drive you to the hospital? And I'm looking, why I got to go to the hospital? And he said, just have somebody drive you to the emergency room. So my husband drove me to the emergency room. And when I got into the emergency room, they looked at me, took my pressure, and told me, we have a room waiting already for you. And so I went in the room, and they started asking me a battery of questions, a lot of questions. I couldn't answer none of the questions at all. Um, um, now they tell me that when they asked me what year it was, mind you, this was 2014, what year it was, I kept saying 1999. 1999. And when they asked me to walk a straight line, can you walk? I couldn't even walk. I just fell to the floor because I couldn't walk. But in my head I was saying, I am healed. I am healed. There will be nothing wrong with me. I'm going through something right now, but I am healed. I could say that in my head, but I could not articulate it with my mouth. And they kept asking me these questions, and I kept not answering them. They kept telling me to walk, and I still couldn't walk. And they started doing things to try to bring my pressure down because it was extremely high. And I just couldn't do anything. I, couldn't, I just couldn't believe this was happening to me. And in my mind, I'm thinking, this is not happening. This, some, this happening to somebody else because I'm the, the Energizer Bunny. Everybody know me. I'm always going. I'm always doing something. I'm always saying something to somebody. But I could not believe this was happening to me. So I said in my head, because I could not articulate with my mouth, in my head, I'm going to go through this because it's something that God wants me to do. So I said, I'm, and then I'm saying in my mind, I will not have to have, you know how they had a little, put you in this home and you got to do the, what you call that stuff, rehab. I had already said in my head, I'm not having no rehab. I'm not doing it. I'm just, I know you, God, you're not going to have me to have rehab and none of that stuff. So within a week, though, I was out the hospital. 
within a week. And everybody was looking, the doctor was looking at me. I got to say, I'll let you go home because for the first two or three days, I couldn't walk. I was just in bed. But that's just in my mind. I said, by his stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. By his, and I kept saying it until I could articulate it. And I was, by his stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes, you know, sound, probably something like that. By his stripes, I'm healed. You know, but I said, I'm going to talk regular. By his stripes, I'm healed. And by the end of that week, the doctor said, I just got to let you go home. And I said, do I have to go to rehab? Mm-mm, you don't have to go to rehab. And I was walking, I was talking. But then the, the following day, this is how God worked. God worked so people could know that it was him because they saw me how I was in a bed, couldn't talk, couldn't speak. They saw that, but he wanted to let me know that I am the God that what? Healeth thee. Hallelujah. And then that's why God said, how dare you not do what I told you to do? When you could have been on your sick bed today, you could have been in your grave. How dare you? What is wrong with you, girl? That's the way he talked to me. I don't know how he talked to you, <laughs> but he talked to me that way. What's wrong with you, girl? And I said, you know what? Nothing's wrong with me. I'm going to do this. I can do this because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not no strength of my own, but I want to let you know anybody who is laid back and, and not doing what God told you to do for whatever reason. Don't let them get you, you know, don't let the stroke come and all that stuff. It ain't, it ain't got to take all that, right? I don't, I don't want to do that again. Lord, I'm going. Thank you kindly. But thank you. But I just want to thank God for being here. Because guess what? God knows me. God knows me very well. But guess what? He still loves me. How about that? And I bet you can say the same thing. God knows you. God knows you very well. But guess what? What? Yes, he does. And I praise God for that. I thank God for the opportunity. I was looking at your first lady. She is a jewel. She seems like, and I don't, we don't have a personal relationship where we're on the phone talking, but when we see each other, we, hey girl, how you doing? She gave me the great big old hug, and I can definitely say she's never changed. <laughs> never, never changed. And that's good, that's consistency. Across the board, consistency. And I like that, but I, this is what I can imagine. If I was her bud, if I was her friend, real good friend close, you know, to kind of go out and, and shop sometimes or whatever. I think she's like laid back. I don't think, the, tell me if I'm right or not. I don't think she's like high maintenance. Like every time when she go out, you know, and nothing is wrong with this, don't get me wrong, that she gotta have an entourage of women, one carrying her purse, uh, one carrying her handkerchief, one carrying her Bible, you know? I don't think she like that, no? Okay, she just cool people, right? So I don't think she like that. But I think this is what I think too. I think she loves her husband. Yes. Y'all said that real good. <laughs> hey, I think she loves her children. Yes. I think that she loves her family. Yes. I know she loves her church family. Yes. Is this the type of person she is? Yes. Now listen to this too. I think she's a prayer warrior. Yes. Oh. Gotta hold you. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think she's a prayer. Is she? Yes. She can get a prayer through. Yes. Has she prayed for any of you? Yes. Oh, look at her hand raised back there. That's that's your oh the daughter. Okay, then see that's even better because that's in the home. And in the home they know. You can't hide. You can't hide. You can come out here and I can say, you know, all of this, but if you in the house, hey. You know, can't hide that, really can't. But I think she has these things, and I think that she loves the Lord with all her heart, her mind, and her soul. Wow, when I just said that, it's like, ooh, just like a, a feeling of Christ just came in me. I just like, just got hit in the stomach with that one. Because, you know, I love the Lord with all my heart, mind, and soul, so. Gosh, why you get all choked up when you say that? You know, when you really mean it, you just get choked up. And then when I looked at her, it was like this connection, like, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you, ha, no bullshit. 
Yes, God. Uh, Stop, girl. Come on. You got to talk. Woo! Mm. When you just say that you love God with all your heart and you mean it from your soul, woo! It's something about that. But I want to speak today on. Mm. I want to speak today on. You are handpicked for this. Wow. This assignment that you have, this ministry that's in you, that some of it haven't even come out yet, that you know is in there, and when you're praying, you can feel it. That God is going to take you not to another level. Because God always, we always say, God going to take me to another level. Ha, ha, ha. But that's like a, a level. It's like you're still in the same place, but you're just going up higher in that same place. You haven't left that place. You, but you're still in there because he's taking you to another level. But when he takes you to another place, wow. that's what he's doing to you. Levels is gone. You go into a whole new place. And you thought you saw her praying. You ain't seen nothing yet. That's what God spoke to me. He told me that about you. And it was really strange. I was praying, and I was on an um, assignment with a client that wanted to do some graphics. And as I was talking, this particular client was a prayer warrior. And she said, you're going somewhere, and you're going to be talking to somebody, and you're going to tell them that God handpicked them. She didn't know I was, you know, I didn't even know at that time. Yes, I did. Take it back. I did know at that time that I was going to come here. But he said that, she said that same thing, so that was like a confirmation in my spirit. Um, to be handpicked, the um, the. Webster says to be picked by hand as opposed to a machine process. Now, in our life, I would like to call the machine process man. Man has these stipulations and stuff they put on you. And if you don't meet this criteria, if you don't look this particular way, if you can't do this, if you haven't had this type of education, then I'm not, we, you're not the one. God doesn't use that criteria. You can be what man thinks unqualified. I've seen many people in my life who are on jobs and doing things that man said they were not qualified for because they didn't have the education, they didn't have the experience, they didn't have this, they didn't have that. So sometimes they were afraid to even apply because of what man said. But when you go from what man says to what God says, all of those criteria fly straight what out the window. And he begins to place you where you, he needs you to be. There were so many people in the Bible, if you think about it. There were so many people in the Bible. We have David. David was a man after God's own heart. That's what the Bible says. But David was a bear killer, a lion killer, a giant slayer. But look at his statue. He was this little short dude. That's what I think. I don't think he was tall like his other brothers. Am I right? Because you seem like you're the Bible scholar. You tell me if I'm wrong. You know, he wasn't like his, um, his brothers. And even to the point where his own father counted him out. When Samuel had him to line up the, his sons, because Samuel said, the Lord says, one of your sons is going to be king. He had him to line up. He lined up all his good-looking brothers. The whatever way you, whoever, what kind of man you like that you think is good-looking, tall, dark-skinned, light-skinned, whatever. He had all these lined up because he felt one of these going to be the next king. And Samuel looking like, uh, not him. He good looking. Got a little goatee. Might be bow legged. I don't know what you like. I don't know what you like. You know, this one right here, he a little tall. And, you know, this one right here got the curly hair and you can run your fingers through it. I don't know what you like. 
This one right here is this way. This one right here is this way. This one right here is this way. But then he looked at all these guys. These guys, these guys look good, you know? But then he said, do you have another son? Because we're looking at what's outside. And even though your first lady is beautiful on the outside, we know she's beautiful on the inside as well. But we're not looking at that inside quality. But God was. Because the qualities that he needed was this little guy that was out in the field and that was killing bears and killing lions and was getting ready to kill a giant. Somebody that we don't look at it without fear. But this dude couldn't have fear. This guy could not have any fear. How are you going to kill a giant and be afraid? I mean, still flat-footed, didn't even put on the armor. He didn't put on man's armor. She's not putting on the armor of man, but he put on what God's armor, which was inside. They couldn't do nothing with that. He picks up a slingshot. What in the world? He picks up a slingshot to slay a giant. Now, I'm going to tell you, if I had to kill a giant, I ain't picking up no slingshot. <laughs> not doing it. But he was not in self. And that's what we have to realize. We cannot be in self in this walk when we walk with Christ. He did not pick up anything that man gave him. He had a slingshot. He took the slingshot, swung it. And then what he had to do, we have to be strategic when you fight the enemy. And see, the way she's strategic is because she prays. So when David was fighting the enemy, he had to be strategic. And he didn't take the thing and swing it and swing it for his stomach. Nah, because that wouldn't have worked because he had on armor. He didn't take this thing and, and see, we fighting the devil wrong. We, we hitting them where it don't hurt. <laughs> we hitting them where it don't hurt. Hitting them in the stomach with the armor. Ain't nothing going to happen to, to that. No, no, no. Especially with that little rock. But he took that slingshot and he hit him right in the middle of his forehead. His head. Which not, see the head is, is where we get the thought process from. The head is where all of this, the brain is at. And we talk because of what we have from the brain and all of that. So he hit him where it hurt in the head. Then when he fell down, he didn't just leave it there. He took a, whatever he had, a sword. You got a sword, right? And then he had to kill, destroy. See what the enemy does, even the devil does, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So then he had to destroy him. But he took that thing and he cut his whole head off. He not getting up then. <laughs> you cut my head off, I guarantee you. I ain't like no chicken gonna run around for a couple of, couple of minutes. I'm not doing that. He cut his head off. He couldn't, he couldn't get up. He was not getting up. And then he picked it. Look, here you go. He did it. She is a giant slayer. A giant slayer. So she cannot think about the shell she's in now, she's small, she's not a huge woman, she's, so she can't think about that shell, but I guarantee you she's given the, being given the tools that God has given her and she's slaying the giants. The devil is mad at her, the devil can't stand her because she's making waves and riffles and, and Titanic and all this stuff in, the king, in his kingdom. She's making, taking people out of his kingdom that are key players in his kingdom. She's taking key players. See, it doesn't matter if she takes somebody. You might see a little boy that she has gleaned to her heart, but you don't know who that little boy is going to be. Nobody knew who Barack Obama was going to be when he was a little boy. Nobody knew. Nobody knew who Billy Graham was going to be when he was a little boy, but somebody witnessed to him. This is the kind of people that she's bringing into the kingdom. Big people, big fish that don't look like big fish at first because she's touching them first when they're young, when they're not who God has already planned for them to be. She sees who you're going to be. She has a glimpse of it. That God has given her a glimpse of it in her prayer life. Her prayer life has to even get even deeper 
to the point where she going to pray when she don't even want to pray. <laughs> because the demons she got to slay are not little fish. They them giants. They them giants. And God is what? Equipping you. He said, don't be afraid. Don't look at the face. <laughs> I don't care what you're looking like right now. <laughs> He's equipping you for this job. But it does not come without reward. Know that. He's equipping her for this job. And what she's going to do, y'all have to rally behind her. Y'all have to keep her in prayer. One time at my church, when God was doing something in my life, he had me, well, they, they started calling me the demon slayer. That's not a title I wanted. They didn't want that at all. People would come into the church, they would sit beside me, and they would just start screaming out, leave me alone. And I'm going like, who are they talking to? I mean, actually start screaming out, leave. This was the whole season in my life I went through this. I would go somewhere and somebody, they would just say, leave me alone, don't touch me. And I'm not even touching. I'm sitting there minding my own business saying, Jesus is coming, my cup's overrun. Oh, say, but I'm glad. Oh, say, but I'm glad. I'm just singing. And because the enemy recognizes who's in you. Remember what I said. I didn't say he recognized you. The enemy recognized who's in you. When you have God in you, the enemy recognizes that. Sometimes even before we do. Ain't that that's serious? That's now I ain't a deep pe person, but that was deep. <laughs> that was deep. When you live a life that God can use, not living a perfect life, not dotting every I and crossing every T, as my grandma used to say, but when you live a life that God can use, the enemy recognizes the God in you, and He doesn't like you. He doesn't like you. He doesn't like you. So he's going to bring things around. That's why I say you have to. She's been covered by her husband, but you have to, as members, keep her covered. She's praying for you, but you need to always pray for her. You got to keep her covered in this season in her life. You got to keep her covered in this season. I'm going to say it again. In this season in her life, in this season in her life, in this season in her life, you have to keep her covered. Don't, and I know you're going to be saying, but what about me? God got you. Yeah. Guarantee you she's still going to be praying for you. I'll guarantee you that, but you got to keep her covered. Another person who people didn't say would ever be what they should be, but God placed them and handpicked them. That person was Joseph. Unassuming. The youngest, one, the next to the youngest of his father and mother. But it was something in him. God saw it. He knew it. He had an inkling. Just like she knows something's in her. She knows it. She knows it. She knows it. But just like Joseph, God saw it. God knew it. Joseph had an inkling. He did not know the, the massiveness of it because it was great and it was big. God had chosen him to save his people. Good gracious. Being chosen to be there for your people. You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. But all his brothers, why did he choose one of his brothers? But could his brothers go through what God was going to put him through? Could they do, could they be in a pit? Could they be a slave? Could they be put in jail? Could, any, could they take any of that before he got to where he was going? See, when you're in a process mode, you're forever moving. And you're going through something. And everything you're going through ain't pretty. <sighs> Woo. I got a fan on that one. Everything you're going through is not pretty. I'm going, to, I'm going through something now that's not pretty. It's ugly. It's real ugly. But you know what? I'm being transparent, but I got to go through it. I cannot stop. What I want to do, I just want to sit down. Lord, just let me sit down. 
He said, no, because if you sit down, you're going to stay in that, that position longer. You're going to stay in that place longer. You don't want to stay there. You got to keep going through, and when you get through, just like when I go through those doors, see that sun out there? Yeah. It's going to be bright yeah. because I had to take you through this. I had to take you through this. He has to take you through this to get you to where he needs you to be. It ain't pretty. Ain't going to be a lot of people. And a lot of people, I'm on Facebook for my business a lot. And I see a lot of people on there talking about, I'm deleting you from my contacts. I just got to delete you. I can't have you no more. I got to block you. They're doing all this stuff. But I ain't got to block you. Because when I start doing what God tells me to do, and I start living the way he wants me to live, he going to block you. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're going to drop off yourself because you ain't going to want to be around me because I ain't talking like you no more. I ain't walking like you no more. I'm not listening to the things you listen to no more. I'm not looking at the things you're looking at no more. I don't have to block you on Facebook. God getting ready to block some people out of your life. And you won't have to do nothing. They're going to just fall off because the mantle that is on you is going to be too great, and they don't want it. So you ain't got to go around telling them about it. I got to let you go. Can't talk to you more, um, Charita. <laughs> Used to be my girl. I can't talk to you to Charita no more. You ain't got to tell Charita nothing. Charita going to know, and Charita going to just stop calling you. And don't be trying to call her. Where's Sharita at? We used to talk every day. And now, Sharita can't go where you're going. She, she didn't travel as far as she can with you. She can't go where you're going. See, going where you're going when she's not qualified to go can kill Sharita. And we don't want to kill Sharita. So let Sharita go. She ain't calling you. Don't pick up the phone to call her. Let it alone. It's okay. Sharita going to be all right. You know, I'm going to be all right. You know, you got to do that thing. I'm going to be all right. You got to do that. She's going to be all right. Nothing you can do about that. Another person talked about Joseph was Ruth. Chosen to do what she was supposed to do. Ended up having Jesus in her line. Goodness gracious. Ended up being a grand, great-grandmother to David. Am I right? I got to look at him, you know. <laughs> yeah, and Jesus came out of the line of David. Ruth, would Oprah have done what Ruth did? Eh, I don't know. Because Ruth left everything. She left everybody. And she went with her mother-in-law. And her mother-in-law was going to something that she used to be at, but she didn't have nothing there anymore. She said, I'm empty. I can't give you another child. I can't give you another husband. And even I did have another baby, which I'm a hundred. I don't know how old she was. I'm just going to make it up. <laughs> I'm a thousand years old. <laughs> I don't know if I can have no more children. And if I did have one, are you going to wait till they grow up so you can marry them? Because you can't marry no infant. So she's going with her mother-in-law. Expecting nothing. A lot of times we got to go places expecting nothing. But God already got it planned that you're getting ready to gain it all. But your expectations, your motive was pure. Pure motives. You got pure motives. She ain't expecting all this, you know, because this is where y'all now. This church is nice. I love it. But this is not where you're ending up. But it's nice while you're going through. You got a wonderful group of people. But this is not all. Wow. Wow. Phew. Mm. God. This is not it. This ain't nowhere near it. 
your heart. Your heart is pure. God sees your heart. Oh, yandro kororobosie. Tande oroshe ke kororobosie ande kororosia. Toro she moroko ti Andrea moroko rasite. Aya tro korosie tro she moroko na tro koro more si tro korosia ti tro she. He sees your heart. And he says, because of your pureness in your heart, because of your love for his people, I'm going to take you where your mind saw, but beyond it. Because you've already given him what you wanted. But he says, I'm going to give you that plus more because your heart is pure. And I'm going to tell you something. Y'all that's here with him, stick with him. Don't fight against him because when he goes up, you go up. I feel like Oprah. Everybody's going to get one. <laughs> you know, how Oprah began, we're giving out cars today, and guess what? Everybody, that's what kind of blessing y'all are getting ready to be in right now. He's going to get in, he's going to say, guess what? All y'all getting it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. You better praise him on that one. Yes, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. The anointing in this place is great. Yes, God. Woo. Woo. My Robosia. Throw Robosia. You ain't seen nothing yet. Throw Robosia. Throw Robosia. You ain't seen nothing yet. Yes, God. Shandra Robosi. Yes, God. 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 You better put that on your lips. You better put that on your lips. A yes. A yes. 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 Yes, I go, God. Yes, I do it, God. I don't care what nobody says. I got a Y E S on my lips. Yes, I'm a Roboche to Coroboce. Yes, God. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Yes, God, yes. Hallelujah. Woo. Y'all could see what I saw. And if y'all knew what he sees, you'd be off your feet. Because it just don't stop with him. It goes over to you. Flows down. Goes out. He's going to do it. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. What you pray for, God heard you. His ears ain't closed to your prayers. He heard you. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, because you do just stuff like this for good people. Whoo, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know if I finished with Ruth or not. I don't even know. But let's talk about one more person. And I won't be up before y'all long. Seriously, seriously, seriously. Esther. Esther. Goodness gracious. This girl was bad. She didn't know she was bad, but she was bad. Esther was an orphan. Mama and daddy gone. Ain't had no mama. Ain't had no daddy. Gone. I know what it feels like not to have a mother or father. Because both of my parents are deceased. It's not a good feeling, but you go through it. Because you used to call your mama every day. Can't call her no more. But what she instilled in you, what your father instilled in you, is there. Esther was an orphan. And she had her uncle. Ask me again. <laughs> See, I got to go to the expert. I'm, I know my limitations. I might be good in administration. I might can do a graphic that make your eyes go like this. But I have to ask the expert sometime when it comes to these things of the Bible. So I got to see him go, mm hmm. And if I'm wrong, he'll go, no, mirror, that ain't right, doc. You got to go back and read some more. 
But Esther, uncle, name was Mordecai. Mordecai brought her in. I don't even realize that Mordecai knew what he was doing when he did it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But he brought her in when something happened with the king's first wives or whoever they were. They got kicked out. I ain't going through that story. Go read the book of Esther. You can read it for yourself. But he brought all these, all these girls was coming in, and Esther was one of the girls because they were going to replace the old queen. And Esther was one of the ones. But she came favor. Yes. Favor. Yes. Favor. She gained favor. And so when she went with the, um, the people that were supposed to make her beautify her, get a purification process and all that stuff, she gained favor with them. I don't remember what their name was. I ain't even going to try to bring that out my scalp. Ain't, no. But she gained favor with those people. And then when, they, when she went to see the king, she got favor with him so much that he chose her to be his queen. She had haters that she didn't even know about. And they didn't even know that they hated her. See, sometimes people are going to hate you. They don't know why they're hating you. They don't know. They don't even know they're really hating on you. Because Haman didn't really know he was hating on the queen. But he was hating on who the queen was. See, they might not be hating on you, but they're hating on who's in you. A lot of times we get mad at the person. And I already tell people, I always tell people, don't get mad at them. They only hate on what's in you. That's what, they, that's what they have to do. That's their job. Just pray for them that they will realize that they need who's in you. They need them in them. That's what you got to do. But Haman was terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. But Esther had to come to the point where she had to reveal who she really was. And she knew revealing who she really was could either, the way she had to do it, could either kill her or she could save her. But she had to get to the point where she didn't care about her own life because it was not about her. It was all about him. It was all about the saving of the people, saving of her people. And when she did that, that's what she, you have to do now. You have to get to the place where you know who you really are. Because sometimes we as women, we don't know who we really are. As we as people of God, we don't know who we really are. You have to find out that you are the queen. And you have power. And you have to utilize that power at this point to get the people of God saved. And that's what she had to do. And I thank God for... Thank God for you being who you are. I thank God for you, people of God, being who they are for you. And I give God praise. Let's stand right now because when I feel God telling me, this is it, you've done your assignment, I can't go in myself. I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to turn it back into the hands of you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this woman of God, God. We cover her with your blood. God, continue to give her insight. Continue to give her wisdom. Continue to let her know that you are who she knows you are. That there is nothing too hard for you. That he's going to bring her up, he's going to bring her out, and he's going to bring her through. And God, in doing this, God, we thank you because we are your people. And we are the people of God, and we pray for her, God, nightly. We're going to pray for her in the name of Jesus. But God, we thank you for each of these people that's here on today. God, anything that's not like you, we ask you to take it out. God, we ask you to make our hearts pure and always give us in our minds a mouth to say yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.